welcome to Fair Start's Guest Chef Night at Home. I'm Chef Natalie Evans, Program Development Manager at Fair Start and owner of Weeby Jam and Bakery. Tonight I'm joining you from the Fair Start restaurant floor. <laughs> Before we get started, and to help center equity in our work and conversation, I want to begin by acknowledging that we are on the ancestral lands of the Coast Salish people, and specifically stand on the lands of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish peoples who have stewarded it past and present. For almost 30 years, Fair Start has been transforming lives, disrupting poverty, and nourishing communities through food, life, skills, and job training. In 2020, when COVID hit, we transformed our kitchens and redeployed staff to help make sure our neighbors across the Seattle area didn't go hungry by producing millions of meals. We're also supporting students through virtual job training, case management, and wraparound support to help provide pathways for economic stability. The way we do our work might look a little different right now, but we know how important these programs are for sustaining and transforming lives. We are so excited to be with you for a virtual version of our Guest Chef Night to support our local chefs and restaurants, build community, and have a great time. If you have questions throughout the event, please put them in the chat. We'll do our best to answer as many as we can within the chat. This event is completely free, but if you want to support the work of Fair Start, we would welcome your donations at fairstart.org. Now let's get the evening started and let's kick it over to Chef Wayne. Thank you, Chef Natalie. And thank you all for being here. I wanna welcome and I'm excited to have in our kitchen today, Chef Sabrina and Chef Sasha. <laughs> I go way back with the both of these <laughs> gals, and oh my God, we have cooked up some storm. We've done pasta. We've done all kinds of things together. But I'm glad, and tonight, we're going to do a little bit of thing. We're going to talk a little bit about Juneteenth. We're going to talk a little bit about, looks like gumbo. Mm -hmm. And it also <laughs> looks like, uh, what I would like to really talk about is a little bit about what you've been doing lately. I know you have your restaurant. I know you have your restaurant. So, Sabrina, why don't you start out by telling us what you're happening at your restaurant? Well, the restaurant, by the way, is called Osteria Las Viga. So usually we do Italian food, but tonight we're going to mix it up a little bit and cook from our, our heritage <laughs> and our upbringing. Um, but we've been doing some community work, um, like a lot of people have. And one of the programs that we're working on right now is called Future of Diversity. Is that what you were talking about? That's what I wanted okay. to hear about. Future yeah. of Diversity <laughs> is a guest chef program where we invite guest chefs of color from the community to come and show, showcase their talents at Las Viga. So it's one time, once a month, um, and we feature somebody new every month. So if you are interested in supporting a program like this, then check us out, go to our website, and you'll be able to look at the whole schedule for the rest of the year. And then in December, by the way, we're going to have a holiday market where we invite all the guest chefs back to do a market-style event at the restaurant. I'm down with that. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to show up. Hey. Yeah, you better. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You weren't there last it's gonna year. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Sasha, what do oh, you got going on goodness. these days? Okay, well, um, I am one of the chef, uh, one of the owners and the chef of Parasol at uh, Southport. We're down in Renton. So we do rustic European style fairs, a little Italian, a little French, um, drawing from our French um, Creole kind of heritage, and then bringing in a, all the skills that I learned from La Spiga, working wow. with Sabrina for the first seven years? Eight, Eight years. years. Eight wow. Years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was a long time. Where I met my partner and husband and partner now. So, um, yes. Yeah. So, um, we are uh, expanding. We're on our 11th year. We're trying to do a little bit more um, community work, too, also working with La Spiga. And the uh, future the chefs of yeah of diversity yeah. so doing um our Verdenville kitchen too that's project right. that sabrina started so that's we'll right. see that's where the creole our heritage comes into play with our recipe tonight so but, yeah. but you know i think that's really cool because diversity is huge anyway yeah but when i was coming up finding chefs that were like black and brown chefs were not happening mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so for you to be doing that i'm with you <laughs> I'll be there this year. Yeah. It's all <laughs> and then, about building community, for sure. And then um, I think it's Deborah's gumbo. Yeah. There's no oh Deborah here. So let's, no. let's yes. talk about that. Yeah. 
least once Deborah. a year we could count on it, right? Yeah. New Year's Eve, usually. Yeah. <laughs> for, for sure on New Year's yes, Eve. Deborah is our mother, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, and she is famous for her gumbo. Uh, she has heritage from Louisiana. Her mother <laughs> is from Louisiana. Um, and we go back often just to kind of, you know, get, you know, get in touch with our roots. And in mm -hmm. fact, we're uh, exploring a, a new concept, as Sasha mm -hmm. uh, was mentioning mm -hmm. before, called Verdonville Kitchen, because there is a town in Louisiana called Verdonville, oh, where God. our ancestors are from. Yeah. My mother uh, was, my grandmother was a Verdun. Um, so, so, yeah. Little, so little and Verdun is yeah, from so France originally, right? right. It keeps yes, going yes, back yes, and back yes. and back. And yes, like, a lot of history there. Like <laughs> crazy stories, by the way. So. That, that, that history thing is important. It and, is. And we're, we're going to, I mean, this is June. So, you know, June yeah, 10th. That's right. It's really exciting for all of us to celebrate and think about heritage yeah, right. and, and going back through that lineage and figuring out who we really are. Right. Right? We are, in and the, where our food depth. comes from, too, right? Or our recipes, I the should recipes, say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And paying respect yes. to our ancestors. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. talk a little bit about what you're going to make for us. Yeah, so we're going to make gumbo. Um, and this is going to be a shrimp, crab, and okra gumbo. Um, the Everybody's mother makes the best gumbo, just... For the record, <laughs> everybody, and you can have arguments and discussions about whose gumbo is the best and go on for days. And there are a million different ways to make it. The way our mother made it was actually pretty brothy. Um, she mm. always had whole pieces of chicken with the bone and everything, yep. whole pieces of crab. We grew up in Alaska, so we would have the king crab, so giant oh legs gosh, of king crab, so uh, the shrimp, amazing shrimp as well. Um, and she rarely put okra actually in right. the gumbo, right? If, Do you yeah, remember? yeah. Be also, because we didn't always have access to it, right? Right. right. So it was an ingredient we didn't always have. But That's yeah. right. Growing up in Alaska, and but it's always sausage, always sausage, always kielbasa, it. or yeah, 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 the, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. kielbasa uh -huh. or the Creole, Creole. the um, undoing, undoing. undoing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's what we're going to showcase today: a more brothy. Gumbo, but um, with a um, little bit different ingredient, just a little bit different ingredients than what my mother used to make. Yeah. So should we get started or yeah. is there something yeah, else? Yeah, no, we can okay. get started. Okay. I think you're going to do the, what, like a sofrito? You're gonna the basis, yeah. yeah, we need to Absolutely. talk about Absolutely. So uh -huh. we're going to start off with a sofrito, which means like a, like a saute um, mix. But of, what do we call it? It's called the, the, the Holy, Holy Trinity. Trinity. <laughs> so, yeah. So, well, the there's Holy a Trinity. Trinity. Yes. <laughs> there's the Trinity, which is just onion, celery, and green bell peppers. And then the Holy Trinity adds the garlic to it. So, this is all minced up and ready to go. And we're going to add that to our pan. <clears throat> your oil, you don't want it too hot because you don't want to uh, burn the ingredients. We're just going to sweat these down. Sweat our veggies down nice and slow. I'll add a little bit of salt to bring out the moisture in the vegetables mm -hmm. and just let that, um, let that saute down very slowly. So we'll be multitasking and Sasha and I will kind of go back and forth. Right. So next step. Well, I was gonna say oh. the base is of a really good gumbo, right? You've got your Holy Trinity using the garlic, but the roux is kind of the key to the um, dish. And it's not, oh my gosh, how did my mom teach us? You, it's not a science, but it's a, a technique, right? So she had her own like spoon, she called it her kitchen spoon, and she put that amount of oil in the pan with flour. So if you think of a French roux, you usually use butter, but in a um, gumbo and down the south used oil. And I imagine they probably also used um, bacon grease or whatever they had, mm. any kind of oil. Yeah. Um, but you used everything you had. So the thing about a roux is you want it nice and dark and, and kind of um, smoky rich. That's the base of your, of your gumbo. The flavor, if you ever have a really great gumbo, it's just like, what's that flavor? It stem, stems from the roux. But you want to start your oil really slow. And you're going to be cooking flour, basically, into your oil. And that's going to be your thickener and your seasoning into the broth of the base of the gumbo. So I'm going to be working on that because that does take a little bit of time, right? So we're going to multitask here. <laughs> well, well that, that roux thing is interesting because uh -huh. what I learned, too, about it, at least when you're trying to do a gumbo or something, it's like 
when you start to see that color and you start to smell that real nuttiness yeah. Yeah. coming up nuttiness. in the air. Yes, right? that's it. You can probably start to pull that off because that yeah. it's like super hot and it's still cooking. So if you try to get it like perfectly dark, yeah. it just keeps no. going. Yeah, keeps you have going to. Uh, <laughs> that residual heat. That you taught residual. me that. It's carry, it's residual carry heat. Over. That's right, residual. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to keep cooking. So you got to have that little bit of like at least experience or, or instinct. So, but if you can see, I'm just whisking in the flour. You want to get out all the lumps, get all the flour into the oil very slowly and gently. And um, this is when you would be talking to your, you know, your grandma or your daughters or whatever while you're making your roux and cooking your sofrito. Because gumbo is a, it's a kind of a family tradition for us and it's a process and it's a joy of cooking together. So you could have two or three people in the kitchen making gumbo. In our family, at least. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, Sabrina, yeah. the folks would like to know. So you said Holy Trinity. Yes. And then there's also the mirepoix, right? Yeah. And the difference generally is no garlic, but carrots instead of green onions. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Onion, celery, yeah. and carrots. So a lot of times yeah. people hear, oh, do a mirepoix. Yeah. And you're doing carrots. When they say Trinity, no carrots. No carrots. Green onions. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need that the color and the sweetness that a carrot would bring. Yeah. So this, yeah. Oh. Offers a different flavor profile for sure. I can smell it coming yeah. up already. Yeah. yeah. Chef Sasha, right. yeah. I got a question for you. How sure. long will it take to do the roux? Um, so depending on your technique, so you want to do it low, you can kind of like heat it up a little bit higher and make sure you're whisking Constant. really constantly. Okay. Probably about 10 minutes, um, but you're just going to watch the color. It depends on how much oil and flour you're starting with to begin with, but um, I'm hoping that it'll be done by the time you need it. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. So, I have and, faith in you, Sasha. And we should probably talk about the stock, which is already kind of ready right now, right? Yeah. Okay. So the stock right. is hot and ready. And I was going to mention, actually, um, I was turning the dial the wrong way. This goes the opposite way I know, of my butane burner. <laughs> and so I had it on really high. If that happens to you, you can always just kind of calm your pan down with a little bit of stock or a little bit of water. Just cool it down a little bit so it doesn't over caramelize. You really don't want to burn your um, your sofrito as you're cooking it. So very, very important step. Mm -hmm. All so, right, so. So you're just really trying to soften those veggies. Yes. You're not, no caramelization. No, no caramelization, yeah. no, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, someone else might tell you different, but for me, no caramelization. Yeah, it depends on whose house you're at, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to have you put that over there for me. I'm going to go ahead, and since we have a moment, I'm going to get my crab together. So um, I have my crab. The um, the cap has already been taken off. It's already been cleaned um, of the crab butter. Uh, but we can just go ahead and break that in half. And we're going to start... Um, We'll just um, keep whole legs in. So all the small legs, we'll just uh, break those off of the body. Um, so from Alaska, I'm sure it's always Dungeness. Uh, from Alaska, it's um, not, no, uh, we do king crab. Okay. And what other Fortunate. kind of crabs do we have up there? Dungeness, for sure. Okay. Sometimes snow. snow. Um, that, oh, yes. We would see that sometimes, yeah. yeah. Okay. But king crab is the king for us. Oh, the my king. gosh. Oh, you yeah. get our dad, we were so lucky. Oh, my gosh. He would send us down, like, king crab fresh at Alaska Airlines when you used to be able to drive to the airport. <laughs> and they, he'd just send us down boxes of king crab and wow. fresh wild salmon. Mm. And we were kind of spoiled as far we as seafood. We were very were. spoiled. The spot prawns. Um, <laughs> Our mom had to find else? ways Moose. to feed us, like, king like king salmon. Like, how would like how can I feed the kids salmon today? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm going to just take a moment, too, if, if you're watching. Um, you know, it's bubbling here, so all the fat and the um, flour is incorporated. And that's all you're going to look for is just a slow little uh, simmer with the, the bubbles coming up. And you can see it's taking on a little bit more color. We're going to get it to the, about maybe coffee with, with cream in it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, and you can yeah, smell it. Smells okay, nice so toasty. I'm working on that. This is an important step. Go ahead, Sabrina. It's almost Sabrina. there. No. Yeah, it's almost okay. there. 
Well, that roux is the foundation of this it, whole thing. It yes. is. Yeah, if you yeah. mess up your roux, I know I'm just standing here, but. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep it moving. <laughs> and you see I switched to a spatula instead of the whisk. So yeah. we were just using that not, to get not, it going. Not a good time to get on the phone. Huh? No, <laughs> well, unless you're telling, you've done this a million mm -hmm. times, you could. <laughs> my mom probably was, but it had a cord attached to it at the time. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, we're getting there. All right. So Natalie did a little cooking demo with you up at your restaurant. Is that right? What's that? Chef Natalie? Natalie? Oh, yes. Yes. We sh Chef Natalie was one was our second, second. Yeah, was. Future of Diversity guest chef with her concept <laughs> Weeby Jam and Bakery. Nice. Ooh. And um she and her partner put on a um Jamaican dinner. It was amazing. It was so authentic. It was some of that, some of those things I haven't had yet, like the manish water. I don't think I've ever had that. Yeah, the goat. Which is a goat head stew. Yeah, wow. amazing, amazing. You guys did an awesome job, and then you did the hummingbird cake as the dessert. Yep, that was good. Nice. And we had amazing. and we had the um, the hibiscus punch as well. Oh my gosh, that was oh. so, so good. We'll, yeah, definitely. We'll talk about that too later on. But yeah. um, Chef Sabrina, have you um, had any mentors along the way with your in your chef and career that's interesting i think about that a lot um not as many as i would like to have um i i really do look at my mom as one of my mentors because she really did bring us up farm to table like from mm. the gardening yeah. you know she was like the perfect homemaker and so we learned gardening cooking all of that from her um but also um Chef Jimmy uh, Watkins. Uh, Jimmy was Watkins. Cool. Oh, yeah. I just remember when we were, because um, Sasha was our yeah. original partner at La Spiga, and then when we were, um, when we decided to move to our bigger location, um, he really helped me out. Like, he sat with me and talked to me about the growth process and um, things that I needed to be thinking about, and I really appreciated his time uh, back then. Yeah. So it's, um, I really look at him as one of my mentors, and um, even uh, Chef uh, Daisley Gordon, same thing. I went uh, to him and picked his brain about um, the the opening and how, you know, because, yeah. yeah. Chef Daisley, I love that guy. Yeah. And <laughs> Chef Jim, I mean, he, that, he was like holistic thinking, oh, you know, my yes. community yes. thinker. I mean, he yes. did a lot for a lot of us chefs in this town. Yes. And so behind the scenes. And Sasha, do you have I, any? Um... Well, <laughs> this is a little <laughs> embarrassing, but besides my mother, mm -hmm. um, this one draw, drew me into the restaurant business. <laughs> <laughs> I pay her to say that. <laughs> no, because I was a account major. I was a business major. And, uh, you know, I was very intrigued, don't get me wrong. And I did some little um, side projects where I started like a baking, uh -huh. like I did like a catering business on baking and just out of my home. But when Sabrina came to me and said, let's start a restaurant, do you want to? We dreamed of it our whole life. Yeah. And, and she taught me so much about it after living in Italy and coming and teaching me the, the um, behind the scenes. Do you think you just are cooking, right? And um, cooking in a restaurant is wholly different, mm -hmm. wholly different. Really different ballgame. And uh, she, luckily she got pregnant, and so I had to kind of take over in the kitchen. <laughs> so she taught me, <laughs> taught me the ways. And then look at, you know, I have my own restaurant, and hopefully I'm passing that forward too to the um, young people that are working for us. And So speaking of um, young people, yeah. do you guys have any um, advice for those that are coming up and wanting to do uh, working in the food industry, like jobs and things like yeah. that you guys have any advice for that? I'll go first because she's probably gonna blow me out of the water but I would say <laughs> be really passionate about what what this um, means to you mm -hmm. um, because it's not easy work it is hard work it's you're the glamorous. first one in yeah. you are the last one out and I feel like you know the food network network kind of makes it really glamorous but um, it is an amazing profession to um and passion to yeah. pursue it really is otherwise we wouldn't do it right exactly. <laughs> so fulfilling making people happy oh my gosh feeding every people. day and and you're serving everybody needs to eat mm -hmm. right everyone needs to come to the table and we talked about that like we need to make our table special so that everybody's welcome 
And, well, I'm glad um, that you guys are on our table. Yeah, right? <laughs> our cool community table. table. We're going to have some really Never great... mind the burns and the leg stains. And the... <laughs> it's all good. We can just stand and buff that yeah, right? out. Right? <laughs> you know, we can enjoy the food. So, yeah. Sabrina, we see you're slowly adding a little bit of broth in there. Yeah. Bringing that flavor together. Yeah, so the sofrito is nice and tender now. So, I'm going to go ahead and add all the stock. I'm going to actually have enlist your help and have you pour that in there for me. Oh, Lord. I'll tell you when it's I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got stronger wrists than I. A little more. And that's great. So when you think about the stock that you're going to use for your gumbo, it's really important to have a very flavorful stock because that's going to uh, reflect how the end product is. Um, this is a chicken stock, but you can also use uh, seafood stock or a vegetable stock, uh, whatever uh, you have available, really, you know, but you'll want to season it and make sure it's very flavorful. All right, so that's going to come to a boil. I think one of the things that's fun with us as being in the industry is like you've tried it with chicken, you've tried it with veg, you tried it with seafood, yeah. and you, you know the delicate and the different flavors that kick up when you do that. It's pretty cool to... So if you ever get a chance, make it one way. Next week, make it another way. <laughs> it's like going from house to house on your street, basically, right? Yeah, you yeah. The flavor components change mm -hmm. a little bit. Exactly. If it didn't come out exactly the way you wanted it, you know what to change the next time. Sasha, okay. are you I'm ready? I'm going to interrupt. I know. I'm like, <laughs> okay, the room's ready. So you can, I don't know if you can okay. see this, but so now you can see it's almost like a paste, right? It comes yeah. together, so we have to turn the heat down, and we're going to add yeah, the stock. It's to break. Yeah. I'm going to start to go ahead. Yeah, yeah it should bubble pretty good. Yep. Yeah, be careful. Yep, I will. <laughs> Ooh, yay! So you're going to want to make sure your stock is hot when you do this process. But you're adding your liquid, and this is going to make your slurry. It's going to thicken, and this is the base of your gumbo. That was perfect. Great. Yeah. So if it's your first time, maybe a little bigger pan <laughs> so you have room. And you want to keep whisking because you want those lumps to come out. And you'll notice you don't have to be polite at that point. You say, hey, I need to stop yep. now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I wish I had smell a vision It smells great. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And so we're adding just enough stock to loosen everything up. And then yeah. at some point we'll add that mixture back to the yeah. pot. This is called kind of a slurry is what we like to call it. Um, and that, and honestly, if it's your first time and, and you don't get it right, feel free to grab a strainer and strain those lumps out because I've done it many of times where I'm like, oh shoot, didn't catch it right. Or right. if you end up burning it, um, you can you just throw it out and start, start over, over. Yeah, It's not worth it. Ruining your gumbo. Is that worth saving? <laughs> exactly. All right, you ready? Uh -huh. All right. There's a little hole right there that I keep on. All right, here we go. Nice. Mm. Do you want all that? Sure, some of it. Okay. Let's do this. Yep, Ooh, that's, that's a slurry. All right. We're just loosening up that little bit that didn't get dissolved into okay. the liquid. Okay. Nice. Beautiful. Awesome. Rue's done. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Now you just added another color component mm -hmm. to that stock. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's so what makes your... It also adds a very, very deep color. Um, that yeah, mm -hmm. that's perfect. I think Beautiful. that's one of the things that people need to understand is like, as you go through the stages, we, we smelled it differently. We watched the vegetables soften. We're watching the colors change as yeah. we... All that's like... That's, I think that's... For me, that's what keeps me in the business. Everything's exciting all the time when you're cooking. Mm -hmm. It's like a giant science project. Giant <laughs> science project. <laughs> okay, should I right. start? The, yes, go okay, ahead and the start the okra. okra. The so, oil, a little bit. What is that? The what oil. are you pointing at? Oh, you want the oil? Uh -huh. okay. okay, there you go. All right. Nice. So, um, so um, you talk about the okra. I'll yeah, cook it. Okay. <laughs> so this is interesting. Um, we didn't always have okra in the gumbo, but my mom would make okra from time to time. And one of the things that she always talked about was cooking out the mucilage. So as you know, okra is very slimy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if you want to make it a little bit more pal palatable for your children, you're going to cook that off. And so she's, um, so she's always just kind of cooked that off. But um, you can also just put it directly in your 
gumbo if you prefer. If it's cooked, right? Uh-huh, and yeah. that'll help, that mucilage helps to thicken it up as well. Yeah. So, but we're gonna saute it, because I want to. I also want to season the okra. Like, I want it to mm -hmm. be very flavorful, mm -hmm. so that it kind of stands out in your gumbo. So when you um, say cooking off the, the, the slime, might as well yeah. say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in this, in this technique, it'll be more like, kind of like drying it out a little bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the saute technique. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. And it gives a little caramelization too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Deepens you have a little bite to it. A little bit. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Just like when you cook any vegetable. And it'll hold that seasoning. Well, and you, you may too. think this is crazy, but that caramelization actually mm. from the natural sugars mm -hmm. kind of adds a little sweet to it. Yeah, it does. Pretty fun. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It adds a different mm. flavor profile for sure. So you guys want to talk about how it was for you guys like celebrating Juneteenth at home? <laughs> That's interesting that you asked that because um, because since I knew we were going to be on this program, I've been asking around because we I only remember actually celebrating Juneteenth once in our childhood, yeah. and I spoke to mom about that, and she was just like, "Yeah, we, um, you know, they they would." It was, you know, the black churches and the um, black organizations mm -hmm. that would organize a picnic, and so we would go and have a picnic. But, I mean, I remember doing it once. Um, but she said that there was actually a really large community in Anchorage, Alaska, a large black community, wow. because there were a lot of uh, folks from the south that came up through Anchorage or through Alaska yeah. to work on the pipeline, ah. and they just stayed and settled in Anchorage, I, um, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, they really do it up in Anchorage, as far as I know. But we didn't have a really, you know, we weren't steeped in the Juneteenth tradition. And right. as I ask around, you know, a lot of my friends from the north, you know, say, yeah, I knew what it was, but... You know, they weren't really, you know, they... It wasn't it something wasn't, that was, like, celebrated because yeah, not a lot broadcast. of people really knew about it. Yeah, or taught. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's an so, important piece of our American story that's missing, oh, so I'm glad so that important. we're able to celebrate now yeah. as Me a too. nation. It's yeah. yeah, because it's now a national holiday. Yeah. So, um, that's amazing. yeah, that's really exciting, and, and um, I, I, I do know that you're supposed to serve something red. That's why we wore red today. <laughs> yeah. We're not serving anything red, but we but we wore red. Um, and foods from the south, traditional mm -hmm. foods from the south. Well, yeah. Chef Chef Wayne, all about that barbecue. That barbecue, <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I, that's what I first learned about it. It's probably I was probably already in my thirties okay. and not celebrated Juneteenth and yeah. ended up doing a barbecue cook off yeah. in Oakland, California. That's Ooh. all right. <laughs> Is that where you grew up? I grew up all over. My dad was in the service, so okay. it was like we were Kansas, Kentucky, Germany, oh, back to Colorado, yeah. so, okay. um, and then settled in yeah. California. I did. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now but, you're in right. But yeah, the history of Juneteenth, yeah. more and more people are asking and reading yes. and starting to understand, understand it. about it, um, where I did not, and maybe it sounds like all of us at this table really didn't get it coming up through school. So right. Right. now I think it's starting to get out there yes. a little bit, and I'm excited. Me too. That nationally, federal, I mean, it's a holiday, so people will stop for a moment and, and celebrate. At least think about it. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to point out, don't be afraid. If you're cooking okra, That that is the stuff you're probably trying to, I don't know if you can see it, the sticky, slimy stuff, cooking it, that off. Which is delicious. Um, yeah, I'm which, like, especially you when you take cook that it off. off. Me. Yes, sorry. <laughs> One thing that I learned when I went to Close Saskat, the, there's a, um, a school that teaches sustainable cooking and, and um, practices. And we would go out foraging, right? Mm. Um, and one of the things that we forage were these little things called mallow, oh, and, and that's related to. Mm -hmm. it, but that's where marshmallow comes from—that sticky, like substance. It's not scary; it's delicious. <laughs> you just gotta either understand it or or what we're doing here is just. Um, well, it's one of those either you love it or you hate it. Yeah, well, <laughs> you could yeah. be both. Unfortunately, right? We yeah, I didn't be. used to love it, no. but I love it now. Yeah. And my kids, I'm really surprised. I think my kids it's like. like it. Nobody like canned spinach, right? But if you if you eat it fresh or if you know how to process it, right? I think it's all about how you cook it and prepare right. it. Right. Yeah. Um, I've missed a couple of steps, so I'm just going to oh, step go and ahead. jump yeah, in yeah, here. Yeah. Um, at this point, I can go ahead and add my parsley and um, green onion. 
And what the step that I actually missed is the t adding the thyme. So I should have added that in with the sofrito just to bring out the flavor a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna add Don't it hear? to the okra, Perfect. and then we can kind of saute that in. Awesome. So and is that then, a fresh thyme or? Yeah, fresh thyme. So you want the bloom in with the, the vegetable a little bit? Yes, yeah. yes, I want it to, yeah. And it, it does need to be sauteed for, for my personal taste mm -hmm. rather than just dropping it into the soup. Yep. I think uh, thyme needs to be sauteed. Um, yeah. So that's my personal preference. So there's thyme, mm -hmm. we're gonna add salt. Yep, perfect. Good amount. Mm -hmm. And then we have some of my homemade Creole seasoning here, and I'm going to add that as well. And oh, while wait. I'm at it, and wait, wait, in the wait. spirit whoa, whoa, of... Whoa, whoa, the secret time. ingredient. What, 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 what all's in there? <laughs> oh, lots of stuff. Lots of, lots of yummy stuff. I, uh, if I tell you, I'm going to have to kill you. No. Oh, <laughs> and um, I was going to say, afraid. time is an important flavor, too. Time. To oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, so, yes. <laughs> I was just going to throw that in salt. Yes. Okay. Yes. The Creole seasoning can be a little extra added punch. Right. Okay. Creole season is not obligatory for gumbo, but I like to um, I like to season the components with it. So okay. the okra, but also um, I'm going to season the shrimp ahead of time because again, once it goes into the soup, I don't want it to lose all of its flavor into the soup and just become like a texture thing. It, I want the flavor to stand out. Yeah. So I'm going to salt that a little bit. And then before I go too far, I should probably taste this and make sure it's not too salty. So huh? I'm going to grab a spoon. So yeah. we're almost at the point where all this is just going to come is, together. Yeah. And yep. Because this done. is basically that's ready. You can see that the, the little so stickiness yeah, is almost gone. And that's ready. That's awesome. Yes. One yep. Let's see if it has enough uh, seasoning. Yeah. So I think one of the things that... Good. I'm looking at yeah. is how you cook in stages. You know, sometimes people read the recipe and they just throw everything in there. But there's a certain reason you kind of, I mean, you, yeah. you season everything yeah. along the way. Yes, yes. We're layering, building flavors, yeah. building on top of everything. Yeah. So, um, And That's, by the way, in case you couldn't notice, the crab is already cooked. So if you see that it's kind of red, uh, you know that it's already cooked. Cool. All right. So are yes. we ready? Yeah, All right, absolutely. with the okra. Right. I, I always th didn't it always take like hours and hours it for seems mom to like make gumbo? It, yeah um, I, <laughs> probably you guys it was just her like, and it's just like, like <laughs> well every, doing and great. she probably made Some a lot was, at a uh, time as well yeah so yeah now so now we got the okra in there i can see yeah. it tightening up you're talking about the, up, the yeah? okra with the music thicken it mm -hmm. yeah that yeah. is all right go ahead and add all the right shrimp. here the shrimp go in so the shrimp go in raw but seasoned and those don't take long to cook and, at all. They'll take about like, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. They're done, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, it doesn't take long. And these Add are like little pan. medium, like medium shrimp. They're not huge yeah. anyway, no, no, so yeah, they won't yeah, take that long. And the shells small. are off, too. Exactly. You don't have to do shell off. but And uh, they also help season the stock at the end, yeah. right, with the flavors. Yeah. Same with the crab. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it was very chickeny before, yes. but now that the shrimp is in and mm -hmm. when the crab goes in, it'll have more of the mm -hmm. seafood flavor profile. Yeah. All right. Um, and one more thing that we wanted to talk oh, about right. while this comes to a boil, because this has to come to a boil, then I'll add the crab, um, is filet. Yes. So to filet or not to filet, everybody <laughs> has their preferences. I found out from Chef Matt Lewis, who you know, I know you know, from Where You At Matt. Well, yeah. He's just like, so are you a, an okra girl or a filet girl? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> tell me more. Anyway, so definitely an okra girl. Somehow I've never like quite, I don't oh, love filet. I'm filet all the way. <laughs> See, everybody has their preference. You um, only need a little bit. You just a little sassafras. bit. Sassafras. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it comes from the sassafras. Sassafras, sassafras. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. So. And we were talking earlier, where do you find filet? Now you can say online, but yeah, you can get it at the grocery it store, wasn't, Safeway. See, but when I moved to Seattle in the 80s, right. it was like, where do you find it? We, should we take have it, to we have should... it shipped in from Louisiana. Yeah. Or... <laughs> we should take a little stash in culinary school and be like, yeah. oh, oh, I can't get this yeah, anywhere else. Right? And a little bit does go a long way. Yeah, so you, you just need that little packet. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so then... just adding the crab now, really just to heat through. Doesn't have to cook. It's, cooked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's boiling. Yeah. It's boiling. Go. And I'll grab the And so you want filet, Sasha? Bowl? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Well, so, but remember, Mom, when we were growing up, because not everyone likes filet, yeah. we would sprinkle it. If you did like it, you just sprinkle some on top of your mm -hmm. bowl. But you always start with your bowl and a nice lineup, at least at our house and our family, and then you put the rice in the bowl and spoon whatever you like. You pick out your favorite pieces in the bowl. <laughs> I see that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was the best, best meal well, we had Ever. two brothers and a sister, so she always got to go first. Uh, well, she did. The, the guys had to arm wrestle. Who's next? And <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because some people don't like, you know, the, to pick through the bone, the bones of the um, mm -hmm. the crab shells, I should say. Mm -hmm. But um, if you don't and you want to splurge on some Dungeness crab at fifty dollars a pound right now, <laughs> go yes. for it. Good to know. Yes. Crawfish is another thing, right? We used to do. So, and right. what else? Some filet. That's it. If yeah, go ahead. <laughs> some you're, you're a filet kind of girl. Go for I it. I am. <laughs> and really, just a little sprink over the top, and you stir that in, and you grab your spoon, and you uh, go to your spot. And the best thing about it, it's better the next day, right? Yeah. Yes. There you Leftover go. gumbo. It's all the flavors <laughs> marinates. Everything's there. Everything's yeah. great. So thank you so yeah, much. You're welcome. Chef Sabrina and Sasha. Thank for you, coming. Sabrina, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much for coming thank down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Happy thank you. Juneteenth, too. <laughs> you're all for me. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. So Chef Wayne and I had a chat earlier today about <laughs> Fair Start, Juneteenth, and Red Drinks. Take a look. So good to have you here. This is great. You know, Juneteenth, got Fair Start. You got these red drinks we're going to talk about a little bit. But the, I tell you, there's a it's huge misconception about Juneteenth. People don't really understand that. I know you did a little looking up and checking it out. Mm -hmm. What did you learn? Well, I learned that, uh, you know, Juneteenth is one of those holidays that's been celebrated annually throughout the United States. Um, but I also learned that, you know, it took place in 1865 on June 19th when the Union troops, they came to Galveston, Texas, and they told, had a decree, and they read it off to 250,000 slaves. A quarter million yes, slaves? Yes, 250,000 American, African-American slaves, and letting them know that they are free. And it was just one of those things where, uh, you know, they didn't even get to know. They didn't know. And the reason why they didn't know is because their slave masters didn't tell them. And also, so they were still slaving two years after they were free. Yep. Two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Yep. And so, you know, the, the Confederates didn't want them to know as well uh, about their defeat. And so basically this particular holiday, June 19th, is a symbol or just a, a moment, a time to remember this moment in time, this moment where this, these folks were, it was announced to them that they are free. Can you imagine the, the victory? Can you imagine the, the relief? Just the, just the everything roll off, kind of chill out for a minute and then go, probably didn't even believe it. Right. Probably didn't even believe it at first. Right. But, 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 but I, I think for me, there was like pockets of, Juneteenth celebrations after that. Yeah, because of the migration. Because after a while, folks had migrated. They left Texas. They went to other parts of the United States. But they actually took this moment, this celebration with them. And so it actually has been celebrated throughout different communities within the United States. So it's not only just about the food. <laughs> <laughs> you might think, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not only about the food, but it's all about, you know, bringing people together you know, prayer, music, singing, community, the, the celebration, loving the on each family, other. the community, yes. all of that. Yeah, that's what it's about. And it's it's kind of strange because for myself, I mean, I probably didn't know. Maybe thirty years ago, was the first time I heard about it. I was in Oakland, California, mm -hmm. and I was asked to do a Juneteenth barbecue cook-off. Oh, what barbecue? Okay, so, so that was about the food, <laughs> <laughs> and we got this opportunity just to really like kick it understand like you say there was celebration mm -hmm. there was prayer there was a whole lot of hugging there's just it was just a most wonderful feeling for me to be able to do that yeah um but then fair start had a little piece about this juneteenth thing oh yeah we had our own little moment here which i think is not say little but it was big 
It's big, big for, for be, big for, you know, the folks that identify as BIPOC that work here within this organization. And so, you know, our DEI work here at Fair Start is so important. And so one of the groups um, worked together to have this Juneteenth holiday observed at Fair Start. So you're talking about all the diversity, equity, and inclusion mm -hmm. work we're doing. Yes. DEI, okay. Yes. Yeah. So we had them, they actually worked together to have this holiday observed as a holiday for us to be off and we can celebrate as well. But then, you know, because I think we were a little ahead of the curve because then after that, on June 17th of 2021, the United States, you know, President of the United States had actually signed us into a law That's as so a federal holiday. So now we all get to enjoy the holiday, but then we also get it. It's a paid holiday now. Well, we've been with Fair Start for a while, you and I, and <laughs> we are usually generally ahead of the curve. We're, we're trying to do right by the community and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, empowering people. And, you know, we, we, we always say people come here, they transform their lives through food, yeah. job and life skills, life skills and job placement, right? Right. So, yeah, it's incredible. And then this drink you brought... <laughs> And, and this is red. I mean, yeah, you know, this red drink is actually, um, it's hibiscus. It is um, a, a plant or like a tea that was um, actually migrated with the West African um, slaves when they came. So this is something that came along with it. So it was kind of like dispersed out into the South and some parts of Mexico, maybe in South America as well. But this is a drink that uh, my family is from the Caribbean. So we call it sorrel, but it is also, it's a hibiscus punch. And so inside of this punch, it's um, dried orange peel is like steeped into the drink. There's cloves that is steeped into here. There's cinnamon. And sometimes we put ginger, ginger as well, or we just do ginger alone. So I just kind of like, you know, spice it up a little bit and, uh, you know, put a little spray, on, sounds, a little, sounds, little mint on it. <laughs> sounds, sounds like depth of flavor yes. going on. Yes. And so, but this, the main thing is that it's the color red. And the color red is just a representation and a memory, just a memorializing the blood that was shed. The bloodshed. The bloodshed during yep. this, those those times of slavery. And yep. so not only is this a, a drink that um, not everybody had access to hibiscus, you know, in some communities they had Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. I mean, I was making Kool-Aid Kool Kool -Aid. Kool for my family, you know, was stirring it up. But then there was also the, the, the Kona nut. Well, the, the color nut, though, um, least historian Adrian Miller talks about, writes about the color nut and how it came over from West, West Africa. Africa. That's okay. right. Yep. And they would, they would steep that as well. Mm -hmm. And like you said, put, put some sugar in yeah, there. Yeah, sweeten it up. <laughs> sweeten it up. And, um, and again, because of the bloodshed and, and, and the remembrance of, of our people. Yes, our people. Celebrating Juneteenth with you. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cheers. Enjoy Juneteenth. Thank you, Chef Wayne, for chatting with me. Now we're excited to welcome Chef Joy Promise of Eagle's Nest Community Kitchens. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for thank inviting you for, me. Thank you for coming out and playing, you know, in the kitchen. Here we go, right? Let's do it. <laughs> so, you know, Natalie just mentioned, you know, from Eagle's Nest Community Kitchen, what, what's going on over there? Well, Eagles Nest Community Kitchen is an organization, a nonprofit that I started um, to fight food insecurity and bring awareness to the need of hospitality um, and culinary arts and bring it together for uh, people who are coming out of incarceration or just looking for a new job skill. Yeah, and, I, and well, I've kind of seen you in the garden. I've seen you with your hands in the dirt with some children. What, what's up with that? Well, we started right before the pandemic, right at Right, almost before the pandemic, we started the farm. To, like I said, that we're really big into fighting food insecurity. And one thing about it is to uh, make sure that our communities are sustainable. So we took, so we went in and gathered a bunch of youth that were having some type of trauma, you know, a little trauma. Mm -hmm. But we just loved on them and let them know that you know weeds may go, grow in your garden, but we're able to pull them out, and so you can grow to your full potential and. Make sure that you get a fresh start and an opportunity to do what you would like to do in uh, agriculture and farming. Yeah, and you know, we all know, we have to surround our youth with really good stuff. Yes. And, and learning something so invaluable 
Yes. Um, being able to grow your own food is amazing. Yes. And we have that. We just thank we thank you on that. Yeah. It's an honor. I, I I love it because I love our youth, and we just have to empower them and give them a path. Um, and this is our job at Eagles Nest Community Kitchen because a lot of our youth are dealing with uh, mental trauma. And this is one way that they can get back to the earth. And no matter what was spoken over their life, no matter what someone said that they they are not, we're proving that they are somebody. They and that's my somebody. job to push them all the way through the dirt. They are somebody. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. And we in the kitchen and we got a fryer up in here. We got some. Looks like what well, you got over there some catfish. Yeah, some what catfish. what you got going on today? Man. Well, we, we, we're gonna cooking? we're gonna be cooking some Louisiana fried catfish with my own Cajun tartar sauce, and we're gonna go through some steps. Which will be easy to prepare at home. And I, I I think I broke it down. We broke it down easy for we can go step by step and make you feel comfortable about creating such an awesome meal. All right, where are we gonna start? Well, we're gonna start here with the catfish. I, I, I cut them up, my strips like this, and I'm gonna add some mustard. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot sauce, depending on your taste. A little bit uh, of- Is that Louisiana? That's Louisiana. Okay. That's Louisiana. Okay. <laughs> That's not Kansas City hot sauce. <laughs> no, nothing bad Kansas. against Kansas City. Okay, and then we're going to add a little lemon pepper in here. And this is what I'm kind of, I'm, I'm making it a little wet. So when I make, put it in the cornmeal mixture, which I'll describe later, is what I made from scratch, my own fry mix. So I'm going to mix it up a little bit. So no eggs, nothing. No this eggs. Is, this is good. Eggs. This is just, uh, this is just, a, this is how they do it in the South. Mm -hmm. This is how we do it in the South with the mustard and uh, uh Lemon pepper, and like I said, it's to your discretion. That's a lot of bit of hot sauce. Oh, I'm looking at it. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> we I'm like it excited hot. excited about that hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> we, Gotta get it wet. We like it hot, so you're going to add a rest of your little lemon pepper. And then and then the catfish, you you bought it the, like the whole filet, and then you just cut it and stripped yourself. Correct, correct. Now, some people like whole catfish. So a lot of people like whole fat catfish, but... Where we're at, we can't find that. So we're we're gonna do we're gonna go with this, and it should look like this. Your your catfish should look like this before you put it in the fry mix. And the fry mix is one cup of cornmeal, one cup of flour. So you want to do one and one. So what I'm gonna do since it's nice and wet, I like the way it feels. It's nice and wet. So I get me a good handful like that. And get it nice and just squeeze it off in there. So, Chef, how did you get into cooking? Well, I am the youngest of all my siblings. And one thing, I was always eating last. So I said, <laughs> you know, maybe if I start helping mom in the kitchen, I'll be able to eat first. And sure enough, I fell in love with it. I was cooking with my mom. And I started to d develop a palate for culinary and, and cooking. So I've been doing this for over 50 some odd years. Hey, don't, hey. <laughs> I'm telling no, my no secret. No judging. No, no judging. judging. No judging. <laughs> so this is, a, this is about right. And you want to shake off all the excess because you don't want that to sit in your grease. So mm -hmm. you're going to make sure your fryer is at least 360 or 365. So we're going to just, and you want to hear that chisel. There it is. Yeah. And you don't want to drop your catfish. You want to lay your catfish. You just want to lay it off in there. Yeah, you don't want to be splattering that you oil. All over. You got to clean it up if you, you do, right? You got to clean it up, and it could cause an injury. So we work safe, and we work smart. So we're going to just drop it in there. And then while that is cooking, I'm going to take these gloves off right here. And then I'm going to work on my tartar sauce. Tartar sauce is very easy to make. So you want it, you want to get you some sweet pickle relish, some 
green onions and some diced onions and you want to puree it all together. It's kind of liquidy. You want to get kind of like that. Your mayonnaise. So wait a minute. What's in? This is the secret. Relish? Uh, I got, this is a secret. I, I'm going to have to take you out if I tell you, but oh, I'm I'll not tell you now. Out second, <laughs> second time today. <laughs> this is sweet pickle relish, diced onions, and diced, I mean, chopped green onions, and you puree them all together. So you're going to get a consistency, something like this. So you're so, going to. So I guess proportions is out of the question here. Yes. <laughs> and Chef, where'd you learn this from? Like a mentor? <laughs> I did. I learned it from, well, probably. Probably early 81, it was a chef, um, uh, Ron Saunier at Baton Rouge Country Club. And he taught me how to make this. And I'm like, oh, tartar sauce. I'm like, I wasn't into tartar sauce. I didn't like tartar sauce. But once I tasted his tartar sauce and he showed me how to make it, 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 was it over. changed the game. <laughs> so we're going to take this. I'm going to clean this off with game this. Game changer. Game changer. So you're going to take a couple of scoops of mayonnaise. And you're just going to just add that in there like that. Mm -mm. That looks beautiful. You're going to just do it like that. And Chef, you watching the fish? I'm, he, I'm looking at the fish. I'm just making right sure, now. you know, he's looking at she fish. making this and <laughs> you over there with the fish. So, so we're going to do that. And you want to get you a little either Old Bay, and this is Chef Sabrina's secret seasoning. But it's no secret now. So we're going to add this in here. <laughs> we're going to add this in here. Just a little bit of that. Stir it up. And voila, you have your own tartar sauce. Beautiful. Simple as that. Stop buying tartar sauce. You can make your you own. Make your own tartar sauce. So I'm going to ask Chef to hand me that bullet, that, that yes. silver bullet. You got it right there. And we're going to, I'm all about presentation. Because people eat with their eyes. So you want to make sure your plate is clean as possible, and you want to make sure your plate is appetizing to the eyes. Mm. So we're going to load this up like that. Chef, can you tell us a little bit about how, how it was when you were growing up and how you guys celebrated Juneteenth? Well, Juneteenth, growing up, when we, when we heard Juneteenth, we were automatically going to the mall to get something to wear because uh -oh. That was the biggest celebration for us, to for families to get together, neighborhoods to get together, communities to get together, and just love. You know, that's one day that uh, we forgot about everything. Everything negative, everything was on the news because we're, we're uh, that's the time that we celebrated our ancestors and everything that they overcame. Mm. And it's it's a big day. It's, it's a big day, and I'm glad um, that... It's a lot of light and a lot of awareness is coming to about Juneteenth yes. because it does it is part of our culture and it is part of our history and it's important that we share and uh, let other communities know how important it is to communities. And, the, and it's the history that needs to be told. It needs it's to be told. Hidden for so long. Yes. Um, yes. I, I too was very excited about the federal holiday it yes. becoming because rather than being in pockets of celebrations, now it's becoming more nationwide and that's yes. just a beautiful thing. And other cultures are embracing it. Yes. We have yes. been embracing uh, Fourth of July for so long and now we have an opportunity to embrace Juneteenth. So how about that catfish? Oh, that catfish. Oh, no, it's beautiful. Oh. Y'all over there singing. You gonna sing? I'm gonna sing. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, look at it. And you mm. always want to make sure when you're taking your fish out that you have a piece of uh, uh, napkin or something Just to drain it. it. Yeah, yeah, to drain that grease off because you don't want it to be greasy. So there you go. It's beautiful. So that it's, is it's, that, that's, it's just that simple. But the cornmeal is a fine cornmeal mix. This is basically a regular cornmeal. This is regular cornmeal. Some people use corn flour. I chose to mm. use cornmeal. Um, because you want that little gritty kind of little taste okay. still yeah. in it, but you don't want it too gritty. Um, and that's why I chose, uh, chose half and half. So you can make your own fried but See, I wish when I grew up, because <laughs> I, I spent some time in Kentucky, and they would do the whole catfish and put it between two pieces of Wonder Bread. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Put the hot sauce on it. But Ooh. they used the grittier one. So if it would have been that, I think I might have. 
enjoyed it a little bit more. Yeah, I was the gritty <laughs> ones, and and it it, it it destroys your grease a lot faster mm, because okay. it sits at the bottom. Once it comes off, it sits at the bottom. Yeah, there's and it nothing burns. in here. It's there's nothing. It's nothing. clean grease. Nice. So you want to do an, you want to do another round? You want to do another round? Okay, I got to get you some more gloves. Oh no, I come prepared. Oh, you did. All right. Here we go. <laughs> we go. We gonna do another round. Now, some people they say, you know, in the South they say either soft or hard, and that comes with your catfish. You can either fry your catfish and make sure it's done first of all. But some people like it a little harder, so we're gonna fry it just a little harder. Yeah, so, I like my hard, so that way. You know, it's not uh -huh. as juicy. You know, I like my little crisp you on You like it. that little crunchy crunch. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take this here. And always have fun with your food. Always have fun. And, and when a person can tell if you enjoy what you do by the way your food tastes. Mm -hmm. And you're putting the love in there, right? You're putting that love. Put the love in the food. I got the love for the catfish. <laughs> <laughs> tell us some more about the, the mentoring that you do with the students or the participants in your programming? Well, I do a lot of mentor with youth because I'm my big focus is on youth right now because a lot of youth are going through, um, due, due to COVID, they, they were isolated, they weren't able to hang out with their friends. And I just said, you know what, I'm gonna spend some time, and the seniors, I work with a lot with seniors. Mm. So um, they, they're, they're enjoying the farm, but now we're about to shift. Um, since we're starting to harvest, we're going to be doing from farm to table. So once that they uh, harvest, we're going to immediately start to cook mm -hmm. what we harvest. That's beautiful. So we're going to teach them how to uh, cook all what they harvest with some of them greens and okra. And you just lay that fish in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just lay it in there. And then you, uh, they can say rock your basket. Rock the basket. You know what rock in the yeah, basket? There you go, Sean. You get your lesson rock, right now. Rock that basket. And rock the basket. And so now, <laughs> so now what we're we gonna do? Make sure it don't stick. Is make That's sure right. it don't stick, and we're gonna start our um, plate presentation. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start plating. I'm gonna move this to the side, and I picked this. Beautiful charred greens right here. Is that came from the garden, the Swiss chard? Well, you know, it didn't come from the garden. I mean, you could have said it. I could have said it, yeah. but I'm an honest woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to just put that right in the center of the plate. It's beautiful. Um, you don't want to go outside the rim of the plate. You want to always center it in. Um, presentation. So we're gonna my, just my, my chef used to always say it's a picture frame, right? Yes. And you don't yes. want nothing outside. I don't the frame. want it outside the frame. So we're gonna just place that right there. Give it a nice look. Mm -hmm. I'm already feeling happy. I'm already hungry. Come on. Okay. Somebody now, shoot. I'm gonna <laughs> ask Chef to hand me my lemon zest. Now I like a little lemon zest on it. Always brightens it. It yeah, always brightens it, and it it's just gives that little that little wow, wow, little freshness wow. on it. And mm -hmm. my uh, lemon wheel and my parsley, and I think we're there's good. There's your lemon wheel. Okay, there's my lemon wheel and some parsley. Mm -hmm. Chef, you got the parsley. You got the parsley, Chef. I think we dropped it off. Well, oh, they dropped the parsley off, but. We're going to act like this is parsley today. So, Get a little garnish on you know that. What I'm saying? Okay. And so what we're going to do is kick this right there. We're going to fix that right there. And this we just, just for, just for a little color. Voila. Beautiful. Just for a little color. And you, and you do that high so that it distributes. Yes. Just evenly, just, right? Just up there. If you get too close, you got spots. You got spots. So you, so you got to get up there. You want to get up there <laughs> nice and high. And there you go. That There's is your plate. Gorgeous chef. That is gorgeous. Beautiful. So tell yeah. us again, where is Eagles Nest Community Kitchen? Yeah, how can how where can others that? connect with you? Well, Eagles Nest Community Kitchen, we right before the pandemic, we was up and started. And then the pandemic hit and we had to shut down. And as you know, uh, with locations and things like that, we had to we had to just shut, shut the program down yeah. and move. We had transitioned into farming. But now we're looking for a building. Oh, we're see. looking for a building for these young people to uh, learn culinary arts and 
also hospitality and also agriculture through our program. Beautiful. I mean, you have what? How, what's the number right now? 25, 30? Tw 25 youth. Yeah. 25 youth. That's amazing. And I love them. I love them all. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We got some hard it ain't hard yet. Fish this going in here. It's just going to go. It's going to go. It's a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then we got a soft fried, which is just soft gorgeous. Soft fried with our own homemade tartar sauce that you can do at home and save tons of money. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Chef Joy, for joining us and sharing your delicious recipe of how to make Louisiana-style catfish at home and also how to make our own tartar sauce. I guess we won't be buying our own anymore. I also want to give another huge thanks to Chef Sabrina and Sasha. And my heartfelt thanks to all of you for spending time with us tonight. Please join us for our next guest chef night at home on October the 20th. Visit fairstart.org to stay up to date on guest chef night at home events. Finally, Fairstart can't do its work without the support of the entire community. If you can, please donate volunteer, or help spread the word about our work. Learn more at fairstart.org. Thank you and good night.